So my name is Manal El Sayed. I'm chair of the pediatric department and director of the clinical research center at Ain Shams University in Cairo. I'm also a founding member for the Egyptian National Committee for Control of Viral Hepatitis and president of the Society on Liver Disease in Africa. And it's um, my pleasure to introduce the subject on hepatitis C in children. And I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me uh, to deliver this um, lecture. So this is my disclosure. So some key facts uh, uh, on viral hepatitis, it still remains a major public health threat. Um, and elimination is of course feasible now. We have uh, implementation tools and uh, the WHO has adopted um, an elimination um, goal for 2030. Uh, and it's important that we prevent also liver cancer and save lives if we act now, evolving responses and lessons learned from many countries and opportunities that are given uh, are important and should be, uh, and we should invest on this. And alignment of health systems and services, innovation and collaboration, as well as financing can promote elimination. So why children? Um, hepatitis C negatively affects pregnancy and infants outcome. There is a vertical transmission possibility of around that increases of up to 20 percent in the HIV co-infected women and there is an estimated three and a half million children living globally with hepatitis C infections that requires direct acting antivirals which requires treatment and in the low middle income middle income countries the, the uh, uh, treatment or antiviral treatment is available mostly for adolescents only, there are no pediatric formulations for the younger age groups. On the other side, for pregnant women, the uh, antivirals are not yet approved for women to prevent mother to child transmission. And there are some phase one trials uh, for sofosbuvir, ledipasvir, suggested adequate exposure and good outcomes. Um, and there is an increasing recognition of the need to test women during pregnancy to prevent mother to child transmission. But also to note that approximately uh, 3.85 billion women are in childbearing age between ages 15 and 49, accounting for half of the world's population and 21% of the global population infected with HCV are women in childbearing age. So children are very vulnerable. And this is uh, our study with Center for Disease Analysis on global prevalence of hepatitis C in children, showing that uh, approximately uh, three and a half million children are viremic for hepatitis C and require treatment. And uh, the uh, highest um, total viremic number was reported from Pakistan, while the highest prevalence in children of uh, around 1.8% was reported from Mongolia. Uh, we should remember that there are some 2.3 billion children below the age of 18 years, making up a quarter of the world's population in 2019. So this is if we look at the global prevalence and we dissect it, we'll find that ages, the younger age groups had a higher perinatal transmission, while ages 5 to 14 had iatrogenic infections and 15 to 19 not only iatrogenic infections, but also injection drug use. And that's one of the problems that the US is facing right now with the increasing opiate epidemic and more and more women in childbearing age are infected with hepatitis C and infecting their children. In Africa alone, there is almost 1 million children estimated to uh, be infected with uh, hepatitis C, uh, viremic children less than the age of 18 years. And uh, it's very hard to find those children unless we have a family screening program or a, a pregnant women screening program. But it's also important to note that it, there is uh, almost 13 to 14 million women globally in childbearing age that are infected and viremic for hepatitis C. And, and China makes up around 16% of the total infections, Pakistan around 15%. And we have also other countries like Mongolia and Burundi uh, at four and 5%. 
And uh, of the 500 cases or more, the viremic prevalence was lowest in Chile. And uh, among the GBD regions, Eastern Europe had the highest viremic prevalence and mostly related to injection drug use. By WHO region, the EMRO region, the Eastern Mediterranean region, had the highest viremic prevalence of 1.75%. But importantly to know that um, there are very few countries who have included children in their national hepatitis C policies and guidelines. And uh, this is uh, a global review of the national strategic plans and guidelines uh, conducted by WHO. Most of the national HCV policies, they lack specific recommendations for hepatitis C testing and treatment in children and adolescents. Only 33 countries have specific recommendations for treatment of children and or adolescents, mostly high-income countries, and uh, Egypt maybe is one of uh, those uh, low and low middle income countries that have uh, middle income countries that have uh, policies for children, but not only policies, but also implementation uh, services uh, to children. Updated guidance on testing and treatment is needed for the younger age groups. Uh, that's not available in most of the countries and efforts are particularly needed in countries with a high HCV burden, like, for example, Pakistan. So who are the children at risk for hepatitis C infection, particularly in the low and middle income countries? Uh, those children undergoing regular blood transfusions uh, or multiple invasive procedures, including circumcisions and tattooing. Children born to infected mothers. Uh, there's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, 5 to 7% possibility uh, for transmission. Children with an infected household member and adolescents with high-risk behavior. And uh, why we need to treat those children? Because they can transmit infections. They are being stigmatized and discriminated against. And also we have antiviral therapies that are safe, highly efficacious uh, uh, in children aged three and above. And cure as prevention before high-risk behavior in adolescence uh, should be adopted uh, everywhere. There is, of course, globalization, immigration, migration, displaced children, and that also affects the uh, prevalence of uh, hepatitis C. And there are lack, uh, lack uh, of screening policies for children and women in childbearing age. And of course, we cannot achieve the global elimination targets unless we uh, start and include children and adolescents. And then there are two ways of looking at things and how to include children with hepatitis C in countries, either a macro elimination approach, and that's what Egypt has done, and I'm going to show you this example, which is a general population screening uh, of school-aged children and college adolescents, or a micro elimination approach uh, concentrating on those high-risk populations, uh, whether those injecting drug users, HCV infected mothers, inherited blood disorders, migrants and refugees and others. And we go through the whole cascade from awareness and prevention to testing, diagnosis, linkage to care and monitoring and evaluation. And there are some uh, available options for screening, starting from uh, the rapid test, which is available and pre-qualified by WHO, and that's what we've used in our screening program. Uh, we need to screen also newborns uh, to HCV-infected mothers at aged 18 months. Uh, HCV RNA, of course, is indicated as a first screening tool, especially in the immune-compromised and immune-suppressed children. We do have point-of-care testing like the gene expert, for example, for uh, HCV RNA. Um, we also validated the Orasure Quick, uh, which is used uh, HCV in saliva uh, in both high and low risk children with very high sensitivity and specificity. Um, of course, when we screen also, we need to evaluate the fibrosis uh, situation, and this can be done by either uh, FibroScan or APRI and FIP4, which are not very well validated in children except in hepatitis B and not in C. How about Egypt? What have we done? We've done uh, uh, a nationwide screening program for adult screening, uh, reaching uh, 50 million adults and uh, so far more than 12 million children uh, in a very short period of time. Uh, for adults, it was only seven months. And this is the largest screening program in the world. Um, coupled with screening for non-communicable diseases for children, we went to schools and tested children uh, for uh, hepatitis C using the rapid test. And this is the uh, how the uh, active website was uh, when we had um, teams of a physician, a nurse, and a data entry clerk. Uh, and we had 380 teams and 1,140 were trained. Um, and, and we divided the campaigns into different phases. And it's still ongoing in schools every year now. 
um, and we have a special protocol where everybody is trained on treatment. And in the planning phase, we engaged multiple stakeholders, including Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, of course, and our National Committee for Control of Viral Hepatitis, as well as the National Council for Childhood and Motherhood, who also reviewed the consent forms. Uh, the health insurance organization, who were the implementers of the program, both in schools and the uh, treatment. Uh, our National Committee for Viral Hepatitis was the advisory committee. I have been the clinical director of this program and WHO representative as an external auditor for the program. And of course, the Ministry, Ministry of Information and Technology uh, for all the um, registration and data uh, systems. And of course, we had a lot of awareness raising and community engagement, and media engagement, and that helped us a lot in reaching out uh, to uh, the uh, parents and uh, increasing the number of participants in this campaign, especially that all the parents were participating in the adult campaign. Uh, participation, of course, was voluntary. We had to uh, get the consent of the parents first, uh, and the consent was reviewed uh, by the uh, National Council for Childhood and Motherhood, and there was complete confidentiality and privacy. So the child was tested in school without his peers uh, in the room or even any of his teachers. So there was complete confidentiality and the child wouldn't know the um, results of his test. The results of the test were informed uh, to his parents later on to uh, bring him over to one of the centers uh, to get uh, a reflex or to get PCR testing to verify viremia and then start treatment. Um, and that's what we've published about our school campaign, uh, looking at different governorates and different seroprevalence rates. And uh, when we look here, we'll find the highest seroprevalence was in one of the governorates where the, where the highest prevalence was reported also in the adult population. Those two governorates of 1.1 to 1.5%, 1 .1 but we had also a total a prevalence rate of around 0.3% and overall prevalence rate. So, so out of those who were positive, 90% attended the evaluation visit, 78% were positive for PCR, 100% uh, eligible for treatment, 99.8% finished treatment, 90% attended the sustained virological response uh, uh, 12 weeks visit, and 99.6% uh, attained sustained virological response. Uh, those who did not attend, uh, we called them by phone. We made sure that they started the treatment um, in private, either in private or in other centers that I'm going to mention uh, in my coming slides. There were some challenges because we sometimes had delayed receipt of parental consents, data entry problems uh, for internet connections, adolescents were registered but don't attend schools, uh, and we had to go to their homes, uh, manual recording of cases, network connection problems, multiple stakeholders disrupting school schedule. So we had to make sure that we did not disrupt the school schedule or exam schedule. 15% uh, did not turn up for scheduled confirmation testing. Cultural barriers in some villages rejecting to treat females in public hospitals. And those are the ones we connected to treat them in some special centers created by one of the non-governmental organizations. Difficulty in contacting parents and capturing those with high-risk behavior and in juvenile prisons. The lessons were learned uh, how to overcome service delivery issues in adolescents, including consents, confidentiality, access to diagnosis and treatment. Schools, both public and private, could be the platform for children and adolescents offering awareness and HCV testing in populations with high prevalence rates. Testing and treating children and adolescents should be part of national programs offering access to diagnosis and care to the other populations to achieve HCV elimination. How about treatment? Um, our Egyptian studies, which were so many informed policies, not only national policies, but also international policies like WHO policies, including the use of the soft declatosvere um, in uh, children. And that was for the first time. And we've conducted also, I've conducted with my team a pharmacokinetic study on soft declatosvere used in Egyptian adolescents because that's the most affordable combination. And that were uh, the drugs and the generic drugs are available in all low and middle income countries. So uh, with all our studies, um, this study in particular um, attracted the attention of WHO and I've been contributing to most of their guidelines uh, since um, actually all the Hep C and Hep B guidelines since uh, 2013. And uh, from the data of the pharmacokinetics 
uh, a modeling study in collaboration with WHO was done. And uh, we uh, decided that the uh, optimum dose for uh, the younger age groups down to the weight of 14 kilograms um, was 30 milligrams of the glatus ver uh, rather than 60 milligrams for the older age groups. And uh, of course, we know that for sofosbuvir it's 200 milligrams. And now we are doing the validation study in my center. We finished most of the study currently, and we can see that it has a very high safety and efficacy. And some one of the uh, companies in Egypt uh, producing the generic drugs produced a special pediatric formulation in um, in uh, small tablets. And that's after very long discussions with WHO with uh, experts from FDA and from the EMA, as well as from the HIV teams, because uh, they had expertise on what are the best formulations for children. And, and just to note that for Sofosmivir, Vilpetasvir, and uh, the studies done to the children down to the age of three years, most of those who stopped treatment uh, of those were because of the pediatric formulation, which was in the form of granules, that was very bitter, and those children uh, could not tolerate the bitterness of those. So we decided that this is going to be in a smaller tablet form, and this can be given with jello or with a yogurt or with something that's easily swallowable. And we do a swallowability test before we start treatment. And these are the new recommendations of WHO based on our study. Now, so fast, we were, the clatus were, uh, can be uh, recommended even for the younger age groups down to three years. And then we have Sofosbuvir, Vilpetesvir, and the GP combination, uh, which is only for eight weeks. Uh, and these are the uh, recommendations also for treatment, diagnosis, treatment, and monitoring of chronic HCV infection in adolescents and children more than three years, as well as adults. Uh, the antibody testing, if they're positive, proceed to viral load testing, uh, HCV, RNA, all core antigen. Uh, this is not validated in children yet. And then we offered starting treatment uh, if uh, immediately, if above the age of 18 years, and evaluate those above the age of three years uh, for the availability of um, pediatric formulations and start the treatment as well. And we need to assess, cure, and detect uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, especially in the older uh, age groups. Uh, now there was also a role for the civil society, and this is our summary of the Sea Free Child Project uh, for treati treating, uh, training physicians, uh, making awareness campaigns among healthcare providers as well as families, and auditing with regular visits, and equipment of uh, specialized centers in university hospitals all over Egypt with uh, special tools, uh, whether medical, furniture, non-medical, computers, devices, and those were donated to those centers. And we, uh, we have done a lot of capacity building. And uh, this was actually phase four of the project. We started in 2008 with the interferon, uh, with all those stakeholders uh, engaged. And this is the Egyptian Liver Care Society. I'm the secretary general of this society. And uh, we're proud that we've been the only um, uh, NGO treating children for hepatitis C since 2008. Uh, these are some of the highlights on the awareness interactive sessions with the parents and with the children, uh, some distribution of prevention and personal care items, and uh, also highlights during the COVID-19 uh, where we uh, were explaining how to access the website and uh, we uh, were also interacting with them through uh, telemedicine. And uh, we had 94%, uh, 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 almost the sustained virological response and almost 100% of the cases who started treatment. And those are some of the comorbidities uh, that we encountered and risk factors uh, for infection with hepatitis C. But also there was another program called the Village Free Program. And that also included children above the age of 12 years or adolescents above the age of 12 years. And it was testing and screening all villagers uh, for microelimination in villages. We had some challenges and gaps uh, for children. We have research gaps, prevention of mother to child transmission, early treatment of women in childbearing age, point of care diagnostic tests. Of course, uh, treatment of children with extra hepatic manifestations to prevent also neurocognitive dysfunction, um, the stigma and the economics of uh, uh, manufacturing pediatric formulations and the problem of access in resource limited settings and also having special service delivery programs, particularly for adolescents and including children and um, 
adolescents in national policies. So in summary, three point, approximately 3.5 million children uh, live with HCV globally, mostly have vertically transmitted hepatitis C infection. Almost 1 million live in Africa. Elimination is mandatory to achieve the global elimination. National guidelines and strategies should include the pediatric population and countries may either adopt macro or micro elimination. And I'm going to end with uh, my dear friend, the Nobel laureate Harvey Alter, um, slide, important slide, viral elimination. Uh, one country is worth a thousand speeches and thank you very much. Thank you.